And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, we bring you a story of a hired killer who had a deadline to meet. So now, starring Mr. William Conrad and Mr. Stacy Harris, here is tonight's suspense play, A Matter of Timing. Waiting for somebody, mister. Maybe. I'm supposed to meet somebody here. <laughs> you the guy? Well, just a minute. You you have the other half of this dollar? Yeah. All right. Let, let's go. Where to? Well, the town where you're supposed to work. How far? About 60 miles. I figured it was better to meet you here rather than in town. Safer. Uh-huh. How'd I get back here after the job's done? Oh, I'll drive you. Oh, fine. Uh, go, go ahead. Thank you. Well, I... Suppose you know what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Kill somebody. Who? My partner. How'd you find somebody like me? Oh, it isn't hard. A friend asked a friend. Asked a friend. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter with your partner? Huh? I mean, why do you want him killed? Personal reasons. Huh? You want his wife? No. Oh, you've been dipping into the till and you got your fingers what, caught. What's so important about the reason? It's not. Only I get curious why people want to have other people killed. Well, does there have to be a reason? Oh, not as far as I'm concerned. I get paid to do a job. That's also living <laughs> That's my reason. Yours ought to be at least that good. Well, it is, for me. Ah, good enough. Now, let's get on to business, huh? I got an 18-hour alibi. That uh, means I got to be out of here by the night. Well, you should be out by 9 o'clock this morning. All planned, huh? Just about. Good, good. I don't like uh, complications. Well, there won't be. When do I get the rest of my money? Just as soon as the job is done. I want it before. Don't you trust me? I'm oh, sorry. In my business, it has to be cash in advance. Nothing personal. It's, well, it's just that I can't sue you if you're a nick. Well, you could come gunning for me. Well, I could, but I wouldn't. I only do my work for money, not pleasure. In advance? Yes, Yes, in advance. Well, this is where you'll do the job from. You own this store? No, it's leased. Huh. Your name on a lease? No, it's leased by a client of ours. I had a key made a few weeks ago. Uh -huh. You got a key to the front door, too? No, no, we don't need it. Come here. Now, can you shoot through the corner of that broken window? If it's not too far away, yeah. Well, he'll come out of that apartment house. Right there across the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can do that. But, uh, I still don't like you pointing them out. I wish you'd have gotten a picture. Well, I couldn't get one without a good reason, and I, I couldn't think of a reason. Yeah, but a little picture. Do you is... have a picture of your best friend? Well, no, but I know how to get one. Well, that's because of your business. I I don't know how to do these things. You knew how to get me. No, I didn't. 
No, sir. It, it cost me plenty just to get a friend of a friend of a friend, like I said yeah, before. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, right, let's get this thing figured out and get it over with, huh? All right, he'll, he'll come out of the doorway across the street at almost exactly 8 o'clock. Uh-huh. I know, because I've been checking it carefully for a very long time. And then you pawn him out, huh? That's right. Now, you do what you have to. We go out the back way like we came in, and I drive you to Helmsley, where you catch a train back. Uh-huh. Uh, look, not that it means anything to me, but are you covered? Uh, as far as the police are concerned, I mean. If you mean motive, yes, I haven't any. Mark's half of the business goes to his wife. So does his insurance. There's there's nothing in it for me. Well, then why do the job? Because he thinks he's smarter than me. You mean you'd have a man killed because he thinks that he's smarter than you are? Well, that... That's not the only reason. Well, what are the others? Well, well, just because. <laughs> You're nuts. Don't say that. I, I figure I can get the rest of the business away from Mark's wife after he's gone. That, that, that's another reason. Yeah, getting rid of the one you can't outsmart, is that it? Well, if, if you want a basic reason, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you why wash the storefront windows? Uh, no, no, they've been that way ever since it was leased. I suppose somebody comes to look it over. Well, that's impossible. My client is away for the season. Okay. Well, that's enough talk for now. I better get ready. It's uh, five to eight. I, I thought you people always used automatics. <laughs> that's only a movie. <laughs> Revolvers are more accurate. Well, I only thought now, that... just it... be quiet, please. Huh? Next time you talk to me... I want you to point the man out. Okay? Well, it's about time to go. Uh, Yes, it's almost eight. Francis? Yes? Do you feel all right? Why, Mark? Well, you look feverish. (laughs) I feel kind of feverish. Here, let me see. Hey, you do have a fever. I'd better call Dr. Borden. Oh, no. I don't think you have to. Besides, I... What, dear? I think maybe you had better call him. You just call and go to the office, and you'll be late. I don't care if I am. I don't have a thing to do this morning that's of any consequence. It's just the idea of being late. It doesn't matter. Being late today isn't going to make any difference one way or the other. It's a quarter to nine. Uh, I know, but maybe he left before eight. I just don't understand it. Look, I'm not going to sit here all day. You better do something. Do what? That's your problem. Well, all right, I'll, I'll call the office. Maybe he's there now. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh, well, why not? Never call. Go in person, huh? Showing up at your office doesn't look suspicious. Phone call does. All right, what about you? Well, I'll wait in your house or your apartment, whatever you got. You what? Well, why not? I don't want to be seen around town any more than I have to. Now, do you have a back door to your place? Yes. All right, let's go there, then. I'll wait till you contact well, me. Well, how, how do you know I want you in my Look, place? Look, I got a service to render. As long as you think I can do it, you're going to take care of me. Now, let's get with it, huh? You take me to your place and then go to the office. You contact me there. Now, just remember, I want to be out of town by the night. You will. Don't worry. I don't worry, mister. Either things happen or they don't happen. That's the way I live. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Lowman. Oh, good morning, Miss Brenner. Uh, Miss Brenner, Miss Callender in? Uh, no, sir. He should be here any minute, though. Oh, when did he leave? He didn't. He just hasn't come in this morning. Not at all? No, he called and said his wife was ill and he'd come in after the doctor had been over. Oh, I see what that... Good morning. Oh. Sorry I'm late. It's all right, Mark. Uh, how's Francis? She'll be okay. Just a touch of the virus. Oh, that's good. Uh, come on into my office, Carl. I want to talk to you. No, oh, what's up? Just something I want to talk over. All right. I didn't want to say anything in the outer office, but I think we've got the Parker property. Well, how do you know? Well, the phone rang just as I was leaving the house. It was old Josh Parker calling from Crestview. 
He's ready to settle at our price. Hmm. Well, when do we see him? Not we, hmm? me. I made an appointment for seven this evening. I'm so careful I didn't even tell Francis where I was going. If the Carter outfit ever found out, they'd offer Parker another 5000 and we'd lose the deal. Well, what made him decide to sell now? I didn't even ask. All I'm interested in is buying. Then you'll be there at seven? Yes. Now, let's get busy and drop the papers. This mustn't leak out, Carl. I'd rather you not say anything to anybody. Now, what makes you think that... Don't worry, Mark. This means as much to me as it does to you. It's a pretty quiet neighborhood, no street lighting, and two or three minutes from the highway to Helmsley where you can catch the train. You sure of the time? Yes, this time I'm sure. I saw him leave before I came and got you. He should be there by now. I figure it'll take about a half hour to 45 minutes to close the deal. Then we... Then you get him as he comes out the door. And don't miss. I won't. You know, you're a pretty cruel guy. Me? Cruel? Yeah. Well, what about you? You're doing it. Yeah, but I don't know him. I never killed anybody I knew in all my life. A man's a man. No, he's not. Some are strangers. I can't feel anything for a stranger. I haven't got time for thinking about his life. But guys like you hire guys like me to kill somebody they know. <laughs> I don't get it. You don't have to. Just just do the job, that's all. What's the matter? Am I getting to Let's you? not talk about it, huh? Okay, okay with me. How much longer we got to go? We'll be there in, in 15 minutes. Uh-huh. Uh, don't pull right up in front of the house, huh? Especially if his car's parked in front angle off a little bit. I will. I will. This time we're going to get him. Well, I hope so. I want to get back home. I got a heavy day tonight. Joshua Parker. <clears throat> Well, I guess that's it. Yes, sir, and here is your check, sir. The balance of the money will be deposited to your account. That's good. I suppose you're wondering why I decided to accept your deal, hmm? Well, I must confess I was rather curious. Well, I'll, I'll make it brief. Our daughter Molly, you remember, mm. she had a baby boy last week. She called us and asked us to come on out to the coast and see our grandson. Well, we... Figured we might as well go for a nice long stay and uh, maybe even retire. So we decided to sell. Oh, well, when do you expect to leave? Tonight. Catching the 925 out of Helmsley. Had the storage men in today. They'll pick up the furniture and all tomorrow. Well, uh, how are you getting to Helmsley? Well, taxi, I guess. Oh, I'll be glad to drive you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> That'd be too much trouble. No trouble at all. It'd be a pleasure. Then by golly, we accept. <clears throat> I'll uh, get Mrs. Parker to rush it some, and we'll be on our way. What's taking him so long? Relax. We've only been waiting ten minutes. But he's got to come out soon. He'll be out if he went in. He'll come out. Oh, he went in all right, that... It's his car right out front. And everything's okay. Is there enough light? Yes, there's enough light. Here he comes. A tall guy? Yes, yes, that's him. Who's that with him? That's Parker and his wife. And they're going to the car with him. Well, that doesn't matter. Shoot, shoot. I can't. He's covered. Those what? people are on this side of Come him. Come on, shoot, shoot. I shoot. can't, I tell you. I can't. I'll hit them, too. I don't care. Well, I do. Shoot, shoot now. No go. Shoot. Too late, buddy. The boat sailed. Well, what do we do now? I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here. No, no. Look, this job's jinxed. I'm not pushing my luck any further. You can't go. I need you. Get somebody else. Here, I'll give you half your dope back. I don't want the money. I want you to kill him for me. No. But you must. You see, he's got to die. Why don't you kill him? Because I can't. That's why. 
Uh, sorry, Mr. Unleavy. No, we'll, we'll make it next time. You can't guarantee that. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you double. In advance? Yes, yes, in advance. Okay, I'll stay. Yeah, yeah, let's be getting back to your place, huh? I'd like to get a little sleep. You are listening to A Matter of Timing. Tonight's presentation on radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Sometimes charity begins at home. There are times, however, when charity comes to an abrupt end there. That's what happens at any rate in the next tense adventure of the FBI in peace and war, when a husband plots to victimize his wealthy and philanthropic-minded wife. Fortunately for the woman, the FBI takes an uncharitable view of racketeering, and before the unscrupulous husband has much of a chance to enjoy ill-gotten gains, he finds a new home behind bars. For fast-moving and fascinating drama, be sure to hear this next exciting episode of The FBI in Peace and War tomorrow night over most of these same stations. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Stacy Harris and Mr. William Conrad, starring in tonight's production, A Matter of Timing, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Thank you, dear. I wish we hadn't stayed out this late. It's after midnight, and you had the doctor over this morning. I don't think this party was such a good idea. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but it's been so long since we've been to a party like that. I just couldn't seem to break away. Oh, it's all right, honey. I enjoyed it, too. You never did tell me where you went earlier this evening. Didn't I? No. And I suppose if I hadn't asked, you never would have told me. All right, I'll make it short and sweet. I bought the Parker place. Oh, Mark, how nice. Then that's what you and Carl did this evening. Carl wasn't there. Why not? Well, Fran, you know how he is, always overselling. If he'd kept quiet last month, I think we could have gotten it then and cheaper. What did he think about you going alone? He was perfectly content. We drew up the papers and I went alone. He didn't seem to mind. Mark, yes? do you think Carl feels all right about you doing all the real selling in the business? Why should he mind as long as he gets his share? The Parker Place, nice. Oh, yes, very. Mark, why don't we move into it? Move? Why? I'm tired of living in the city on the third floor. Nothing to look at out of my front window. Nothing really to do all day while you're at work. The way you say it makes it sound like you live in the slums or something. Oh, no. I know this is nice, maid service, all the things a lazy woman could want. But somehow I wish we had a lot of things we haven't got. Like what? A garden, trees, fresh air, even a garage for your car. <laughs> you know how hard it is to get garage space, even at a price. That's what I mean. Move over. I'm sorry. Even with all the money you're willing to spend, we haven't got a lot of the things I think we should have. All right, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow, we'll take a drive out to the Parker Place. If you like it, we'll move into it. Do you mean it? Of course I do. I just thought of something. What? Is there a chance Carl might think you went to the Parkers alone so you could arrange for us to have the place ourselves? No, of course not. Going alone is normal procedure lately. He just doesn't handle any of the big deals anymore. If he's so little help to you, why do you continue with the partnership? I don't know. Loyalty, maybe. He's still my friend. Well, I don't know. I I guess I can't do that to a friend. I hope he realizes that. I hope he doesn't. Carl's a pretty intense guy, and he might go off the deep end if he thought I was carrying him. Come on, let's get to bed. I don't want to be late for work tomorrow. I've got a lot of things to do. Including the trip to the Parker place. You realize this means paying Carl for his half of the property. Do you think he'll mind losing a possible profit? No, I don't think so. 
Carl owes me a lot for some of the things I've done for him, and I don't think he'll mind paying me back. Hey, how about this one? Uh, I don't know. It looks kind of beat. What do you mean, beat? It's a 55. It's just dirty, that's all. Maybe we ought to try to get a sharper one. We don't have much time left. We promised the guys we'd meet him at 5 o'clock this morning, and we got two hours driving to do. See if it's unlocked. Yeah. Okay, we'll use it. Get in. Check. <clears throat> hurry up. What do you mean, hurry up? I gotta find the ignition wires. Take it easy. <clears throat> oh, here they are. Come on, come on. Just a minute. There. Let's get going. Just a second. Turn the dash light off. Gotta see if we have gas in this jalopy. Uh, I guess there's enough. Okay, get moving. seven o'clock in the morning. You told me before he doesn't leave the house till late. I want to make sure we don't miss him this time. If he comes out of the house, I won't miss him. Well, what about last night? You saw he was covered by those other people. Well, supposing he comes out with his wife this time. She can't cover him from here. He's got to go down them steps. Besides, if it does come out with him, they'll be side by side. When are you going to shoot? When he gets to the bottom of the steps. Why not when he comes out of the door? He's closer at the bottom. I'm on 40 feet. No sense taking unnecessary chances. You want a cigarette? No, and neither do you. Oh, and why not? What are you going to do with a butt? And supposing somebody sees a smoke? The windows are whitewashed. Nobody can see in. We'll be looking all around here after the job's done. Okay, can I stand up? Why don't you leave? I know what he looks like now. I can drive to the station by myself. No, no, I... I want to stay and see you do it. You really hate this guy, don't you? Yes. And why don't you just break off a partnership and then you wouldn't have to... Are you trying to to back out now that you've got my money? I could if I wanted to. And one more crack like that and I will. I'm sorry, I meant to... You know, I'm getting sick of guys like you. Now you forget it and you relax, huh? I'll kill you, buddy, for you. More coffee, Mark? Uh, Yes, I think I will. Thank you. What time are you going to call me? Um, About two this afternoon. Do you want me to be ready, then? No, I'm pretty sure we can't get started for the Parker place till three, but I'll call you at two in case I can make it a few minutes earlier. Fine. Oh, oh, you'd better get going, honey. It's almost eight. I'd better check the weather and see if I need a top coat. It's a beautiful day. Say, I parked in front of the house last night, didn't I? Yes, why? Well, my car's gone. Let me see. Right down there. Didn't I park there last night? Yes. It is gone. Well, of all the luck. I never can remember what number to use for the police. To... Uh, operator, get me the police. Thank you. Fran, do you think the insurance company will give me a car while the police are looking for mine? Oh, I don't know. I'd better check the policy. It's funny how you... Uh, hello? This is Mark Collander. I-, I want to report a stolen car. Yes, last night. No, I have the keys. License number... Uh... Uh, wait a minute. Do you remember the license number? No, I don't. I have all the information in my office, the motor number and everything, you know. Yes, sir. Well, I'll meet you downstairs. Uh, 483 Denham Drive. In about five minutes, fine. Thank you. Well, that does it. They'll be here in five minutes. Let's have another cup of coffee. <laughs> It's after eight. He'll show. I know he didn't leave before seven. How do you know? Well, he just never does. Well, he better not. I'm catching a 945. Win, lose, or draw. I don't like the smell of this job no more. It's just a few... 
There he is. There he is. Shoot, shoot. When he gets to the bottom of the stairs, now shut up. Shoot him. Shoot him. Don't miss. Shoot now, please. When he shoot. comes down. No. What's he standing there for? Come on. What hey. fuck? Cops. What kind of a deal is this? I don't know anything about that. Just shoot. Go on, kill hey, him. You crazy with the cops coming right to the door? I'm getting on it. Oh, well, you've got to shoot him first. Not me, buddy. All right. Then I'll do it. Get your hands off my gun. No, give me that. Give me that gun. Give it to me. Give me that Let gun. No, will you? You stupid. But the man was a known killer. If we could only find out what Carl was doing there with a gunman. I've asked him about it time and time again, but he won't talk to me. I can't defend him if he won't talk to me. I know. Mark, why don't you try? You're his friend. Maybe he'll talk to you. I have tried. I know he won't. Do you know why he won't say anything? Yes, I think I do. Then tell me. Maybe it would help. No. It wouldn't do any good. It wouldn't do any good at all. Suspense, in which Mr. William Conrad and Mr. Stacy Harris starred in tonight's presentation of A Matter of Timing. Next week, we bring you a story of a convict ship and a bargain that ended in death. We call it a sleeping draft. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed in Hollywood by Anthony Ellis. Tonight's story was written by Ross Murray. The music was composed by Renee Garagank and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear, Virginia Gregg, Victor Rodman, Melissa Milo, Sam Edwards, Ralph Reed, and Robert Miller. Nobody approves of slums. Nobody likes to live in one. Yet here in America, about one out of nine non-farm dwelling units are in slum condition. And slum conditions don't stay still in a neglected house or area. They spread from building to building, from block to block. To improve our neighborhoods, CBS Radio urges you to write to the American Consul for their free leaflet that explains what everyday citizens can do to prevent and eliminate slums. Just write to Action, Box 20, New York, 19. That's Box 20, New York, 19. Stay tuned now for five minutes of CBS News to be followed on most of these same stations by My Son Jeep. America listens most to the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>